Clara woke suddenly in the middle of the night. It took her a few moments to realise that she was in her bed. She sat up and felt about for the nutcracker, but he was nowhere to be found. She thought of him lying alone in the great drawing room downstairs and she could not bear it. Climbing out of her warm bed, she put on her slippers and tiptoed across the nursery. The moon had come out, and as she went down to the wide, cold staircase, she could see the world beyond the landing window, shining with a snowy brightness. The white light lit up the darkened house and showed her the way. Softly, she turned the handle of the drawing room door. As she swung it open, the draught made the dying fire flare up, filling the room with dancing shadows. Crossing the wide, empty room, she heard a sudden scuttling noise and a mouse ran across the floor. Clara was rather frightened of mice, especially in the middle of the night, so she gathered up her nightdress and raised to safety from the window seat. Leaning down, she picked up the nutcracker and hugged him tight. It was cosy on the back window. She felt safe there, and she did not fancy the long walk back to her room, not with mice running about the house. She pulled up the warm red velvet curtain to cover herself, but her head put her head down the soft cushion and closed her eyes. It seemed only a moment later that she heard a strange scratching noise. Opening her eyes, she found the familiar drawing room mysteriously changed. Everything seemed much larger. The space is fast. The Christmas tree looming above her like a forest giant. It's magic, she thought, a little breathlessly. And in magic, anything can happen. The scratching grew louder and louder, and to Clara's horror, a horde of big, fierce mice came scurrying out the shadows into the dancing firelight. They ran swiftly all over the room, nibbling at the gingerbread man on the Christmas tree, who had to scrabble higher in effort to escape them. Even worse, she saw a huge rat with a crown on its head, who seemed to be the king. Poor Clara! Her heart beat fast, and her hands trembled for fear that he might not notice her in the dark corner. Then she heard the sound of a trumpet and now from a big box marched a troop of toy soldiers waving their wooden swords in the air. Their leader seemed strangely familiar with a big head and long thin legs. Clara realised with astonishment that it was her own dear Nutcracker came to life. She watched holding her breath as a fierce battle took place between the soldiers and the mice. Backwards and forwards they fought across the drawing room floor until at last the soldiers drove the mice back into their holes. Only the king rat and the nutcracker remained, locked in a deadly duel, and it seemed to Clara that the rat was winning. He had a fierce, sharp little sword, while the nutcracker only had a wooden one. Suddenly, the king rat raised his sword as if it would strike to kill. Clara cried out and, taking off her slipper, threw it with all of her strength. It hit the king rat into the small of his back, knocking him off balance, and at once the nutcracker brought the wooden sword upon its head. The big rat lay upon the wooden floor until... The mice came out, squeaking sorrowfully, and carried him into their mouse hole. Clara turned back to the nutcracker and saw to her surprise that his strange big head and long thin legs were quite changed. Smiling at her and holding out the slipper was a young and handsome prince. He held on Clara's feet and while he fitted the slipper on her, he thanked her for saving his life and for breaking the spell which once had bound him. Once I lived in the kingdom of sweets, he told her, and to the terrible day I fell under a spell and was doomed to spend my days an ugly nutcracker. Only when my life was saved by the one who loved me, in spite of strange looks, could the spell be broken. I think I must be dreaming, thought Clara wonderingly. But if she was, she certainly did not want the dream to end. Now, you must tell me your dearest wish, said the nutcracker prince, and I shall grant it. At first, Clara could not think of what to ask for. Then she remembered how she longed to fly of the moonlit, snow-covered world beyond the window. She told the Nutcracker Prince of her dream and at once he took her by her hand. At a moment later she found herself flying through a cloud of whirling snowflakes into a strange and magical world. I will take you to my kingdom, said the prince, and they swooped and soared through the clouds and over snow-capped forests until in the distance they could see the white pinnacles of Icing Sugar Castle rising up out of the snow. As they flew in the great doorway, she saw that it had columns made of twisted barley sugar and that it was decorated with all the sweets she loved best. Then it seemed to her that all the sweets were really alive and joyfully welcomed the Nutcracker Prince on his return. The prince presented Clara to the beautiful sh sugar plum fairy who ruled as queen over the land of sweets. He told her how she had saved his life and freed him from the magic spell. When they heard this, all the sweets began to dance for joy, and Clara found that she was dancing with them. Round and round they went, faster and faster, until Clara grew quite breathless, and her head was in a whirl. Then suddenly the sounds and music died. All was quiet and still, and Clara walked to the first pale light of Christmas morning. Her first fear was that her friend, the Nutcracker, would be gone forever, 
Anxiously she looked around, but there he was on the window seat, as ugly and comical as before. She picked him up and hugged him. Perhaps it was magic, she told him, or perhaps it was just a dream. Whichever it was, I shall always know that you were really a handsome prince inside. And clutching him in her arms, she set off back to her bedroom before the others would wake and find her missing. The end. Merry Christmas from Miss Hunt.